Hello everybody. This lesson is going to focus on the periodic table. We're going to look at some of the objectives that you see on the screen. What types of matter are there? How are they arranged? What's a family? What's a group? What's a period? How can you tell how many valence electrons are there? What's the reactivity like for each one of these? And then how are elements arranged as metals, nonmetals, and metalloids? So let's begin with what the periodic table is. It is actually a chart that was created many years ago. Um, this Russian chemist named Mendeleev started it, and they, he predicted where certain elements would go. Today we put them in there, organized by increasing atomic number, and then they're also in there based on their reactivity and their electron structure. The group tells us how many valence electrons there are, and then also tells us a little bit about their reactivity. And the period tells us how many shells or orbitals the element has. This is helpful to check when you're seeing if you have the correct Bohr diagram. So groups or families are the ones going down this way vertically. So there are 18 of those. And the periods are going across this way. There are eight of those. Okay, so just an overall look at the periodic table. Family 1A are your alkali metals. 2A are your alkaline earth metals. This large group that's in here is called the transition metals because they change on us a little bit. These ones here in purple are your metalloids. They follow that zigzag line, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. This group um, 18 here is a, a, excuse me, 17 is a special group called halogens. And then your last column are very special gases called noble gases. We'll focus on those in just a second. Okay, so your alkali metals react very violently with water, and they increase their reactivity going down the group. So therefore, francium down here would be more reactive than lithium, as an example. These guys really like to bond with the halogens, group 17, because they only have one valence electron, and the halogens need one valence electron, so they make a great pair. Your alkaline earth metals, family two here. They also react with air and water, but not violently like their cousins. They have two valence electrons. So can you guess what group they would like to react with? You're right, it would be family 16, because then if they had two more, they would have a full outer shell. Okay, your transition metals are groups three through 12 in here. They're called transition metals because they like to change. Their oxidation numbers change, their properties change, but they are all definitely metals. Our next group are your metalloids. And remember, start that zigzag line above aluminum and then go all the way down. Aluminum is not included in a metalloid category. It is definitely a metal. So all of these, other than aluminum here, are called metalloids, okay? All right, your halogens, like we mentioned before, is this group here. They are called halogens because they like to make a salt with their other partner in their compound. And they have seven valence electrons. Remember, it's family 17, but you can think of them in just family 7. Okay, your noble gases is family 18. And the reason they're called noble gases is because their valence electrons are full and they will not react with other elements on the periodic table, so they are found alone in nature. They are also all odorless gases of varying colors. Okay, so where are the metals and nonmetals and metalloids in the periodic table and what are their properties? So all of these that are in red are your metals, this purplish color are your nonmetals, and then this lighter color here around the zigzag structure are your metalloids. Now, this is a good time to note, you see hydrogen over here, he's not red. Even though he is placed over here with the metals, he is a non-metal. The only reason hydrogen is over here is because of its one valence electron. So therefore, it fits with family one. Okay, so here are some properties of metals, non-metals, and metalloids. Metals are malleable. If you recall, malleable means you can like beat it into different shapes and it won't break. Ductile, they can be brought into long threads. That's why metals are really good choices for wires. Conductor, they allow heat and electricity to flow through. 
shiny and lustrous mean the same thing. And of course, most metals are solids. The only one who breaks that rule is mercury. Mercury is actually a liquid metal. Okay, so nonmetals are pretty much going to be the opposite of that. They are brittle, which means they tend to break easily. They can be in any phase, solid, liquid, or gas. So unlike metals being good conductors, these are the opposite of that. They're poor conductors, which means they also make good insulators. Metalloids will have properties of both metals and nonmetals. So therefore, we like to use them as semiconductors and electronics. You'll find metalloids in your cell phones and in different radios and things like that because they do have the properties of metals, but not all the properties of them. So for example, they don't get that hot like a metal would. So since they're sort of like a metal, they have properties of both. The last thing I'd like to talk to you guys about today are oxidation numbers. So I want you guys to get into a really good habit. As soon as you get your reference table, I would go ahead and write the oxidations up there. They won't be up there for you. So this is how I taught my students. Just start with plus one, plus one, go on to plus two. Remember to skip all of these because they're transition elements and they change on you. So their oxidation number is not as easily predictable. Then continue, plus three, plus four, and that's as high as it goes. Because after you have four valence electrons, it's going to be easier to start giving them away. So count backwards, and this time negative. So negative three, negative two, negative one, and then this will be a zero. So let's start over here with the noble gas column that we marked as zero. What these oxidation numbers mean is the charge that the element or compound will take on as it gives away or takes on electrons. So this one's a zero. Do you remember what we said about noble gases? Their outer shell is already full. They don't need to react with anything. They don't need to take on, give away electrons. So theirs is a zero. Let's hop back over here to the alkali metals. Remember how we said these were very reactive? They have one valence electron in their outer shell, so their oxidation number kind of matches. The easiest thing for it to do would be to give away that electron. So if I'm giving away an electron, I am becoming one more positive. So hence, that's where the plus one comes from. So tell me about the alkaline earth metals. They are family two, so why are they a plus two? What they want to do to react is give up those two outer electrons so their shell is full. If you give away two negatives, you're going to become two positive, hence the two plus. Okay, and that continues over here with this family and this family. Now, once you go past the carbon family and you have the nitrogen family where it is a negative three, they have five valence electrons. This is family 15, recall. So is it easier to give away five electrons or take on three? I'd say take on three. It's the shortest way to get to eight. So if you're taking on three electrons, you're becoming three more negative than you were before. So hence the number is negative three. So obviously negative two, they're gonna take on two electrons. This is family 16. And then remember we talked about family 17 already, the halogens, they only need one more electron to be full. So they're gonna do what they can to accept that electron and then they become one more negative. You're also going to use these oxidation numbers when we name compounds and write their chemical formulas. So just remember that. Well, that ends our lesson for today, guys. Good luck on your review and your exam coming up, and we want you to do your best.